Last week, the nice people at Vanaeus finally came and installed fibre broadband here at Gadget Towers, boosting our internet speed from about 11 megabytes per second to 250. And one of the first things I did was upgrade from SkyQ Satellite TV to a shiny new Skyglass streaming internet TV. But have I just made a huge mistake? When I was young, there were only three TV channels, and I remember what a big deal it was when the slightly risque Channel 4 was launched in 1982. Then, in 1990, British satellite broadcasting came along for about 10 minutes before it became B Sky B, which in turn brought a proliferation of channels catering to ever more niche audiences. Sky's online TV guide currently has 981 of them. And what I want to know is, who the hell's watching God TV? Anyone? And what about all those shopping channels? Look at this one. Thane TV? Huh? I'm struggling to see the link between the chief of a Scottish clan, as in the Thane of Gordor, and some of their programming. For example, throughout the day they're running half-hour specials about the H20 HD steam cleaner. Scottish clansman, steam cleaner. Meanwhile, over on Create and Craft TV, they're showing tattered lace whispers of lace weekender. Gosh, is that actually a title or just a slightly random jumble of words? Either way, tattered lace whispers of lace weekender sounds quite racy for a craft channel. The point is that of the 981 channels I'm paying Sky for, I probably only watch 10. And the question is, do I care whether they're beamed to a satellite dish on the roof, as they've done for the last 20 years, or piped in via the internet, which is how the new Skyglass TV works? And the answer is, no, not really. I mean, sure, it would be nice to lose the slightly unsightly satellite dish, but it's not like I've been losing sleep over it. And anyway, the terrestrial aerial is not what you'd call a stunner either. And we've lived with those for long enough. All I care about is whether or not the system makes it easy to find the channels I want, to watch programmes when I want, and to skip through the adverts, which haven't been worth watching since Joan Collins and Leonard Roster's last Cinzano advert in 1983. So how does the new Skyglass stack up? Well, here it is. Now, I'm not actually going to say very much about the TV itself, because there isn't an awful lot to say. People who know more about TVs than me say the picture is above average without being top of the range, and the sound is probably better than anything else you're going to find built into a TV. It's a bit thicker than most, but, well, I know how that feels. Otherwise, well, it's just another screen in a sea of them. And the thing is, I don't think many people would buy one of these, especially one of the bigger models, as their main TV. I mean, if you're going to buy a 55 incher, you can probably get a better one with more features from a company like Sony or Panasonic, which have been making them since the Romans. So if you're going to buy one of Sky's TVs, then you're probably going to go for the smallest 43 inch model, like this one, as a second TV, maybe in the kitchen. Then subscribe to the whole home pack and plug your main TV, along with the ones in the bedroom, the bathroom and the downstairs loo, into one of these neat little pucks which replace the Sky Q boxes. So, no need to spend too much time talking about this TV. Let's go and see how well Skyglass works on the puck on the main TV. The first thing I notice is that this new remote control is much better designed. The back kept falling off the old one and getting lost. Whereas this new one, well, it puts up a bit more of a fight. And you aren't going to lose those anytime soon. As for the new interface, well, first impressions are really pretty good. I think that looks quite nice. First you get some suggestions from a variety of different channels. Then you can home in on some more suggestions for things like TV shows. That all looks good. And then movies. 
which is not so good because it's just trying to ram Sky Cinema down my throat. And no Sky, you're already stinging me for 60 quid a month. I'm not going to spend another 11 quid a month on a load of old movies. Then it's on to live TV. And first of all, you can see straight away what's on now and how long they've been on for. I think that's really nice. Then if you click view all, you get the familiar Sky format. Watching live TV works really, really well. On our 250 megabits per second connection, there's no significant lag at all. By the way, if the picture goes fuzzy, that means I've just had to blur it out for copyright reasons. Now, scroll down some more and you'll get some collections. Uh, then you'll get the playlist, which I'll come back to in a moment. Then you get the top 10 this week, uh, which turns out to be yet another opportunity to try and get me to subscribe to Sky Cinema. Then there are apps and then sport. Must see movies, which is yet another plug for Sky Cinema. Oh, and Disney Plus whilst they're at it, which is another £8 per month. And look, if I scroll down a bit further, I see they're trying to sell me Apple TV Plus, which is another five quid a month, which will bring my bill up to nearly £90 per month. That's just greedy. That said, this new interface does do a really good job of making it easy to find the stuff I want to watch. Not to mention the stuff I didn't know I wanted to watch. But how easy does it make it to watch what I want to watch when I want to watch it? Well, whenever you watch a BBC channel, if I can get BBC back on the screen, there we go. A few seconds after it starts, you should get a little red dot in the top right hand corner. But no, if not, you can press the dots on the top right hand side of the remote control. And there we go, loading. And down on the right hand side, it's got restart, which opens BBC iPlayer. That is a little bit clumsy. It's not as well integrated as it could have been. Look, it's taking an age to load and I don't want the Nielsen files. What's going on here? There we go. You know, it, it, it's just a bit clunky. On the other channels, it works slightly differently. Watch from start tends to pop up from the bottom of the screen when you start a program. And if it doesn't, it's not yet on this. Oh, there it is. There we go. Press that. And if it doesn't, you can just press the button in the middle of your remote control and it does the same thing. But look, this time it's gone straight back to the beginning of the program. And that's so much better than the BBC integration. The problem is it doesn't always work. So look, if I go back to ITV for a moment, look, there's some shopping on. Look, I wouldn't have wanted to have missed any bargains. I definitely want to go to the beginning of that program. But there's no option to do that. And if I press the button in the middle of the remote, look, no, there's nothing. On the old Skybox, I would have recorded it and it would be there. No exceptions. The same problem plagues the playlist feature on this thing. I thought the playlist, if I can get back to it, was meant to mirror the experience of recording. You get a big red button on the remote, like the old record button, which adds programs to your playlist to watch them later. Except again, it's a bit hit or miss. I've added my daily dose of rabidly left-wing Channel 4 news. The problem is, it doesn't arrive for viewing until hours after it's broadcast. That's no use. The other problem is the playlist is reliant on the broadcaster keeping the content available for streaming, which they often don't do after a month or so, whereas if you'd recorded it on Sky Q, it's there forever. And the playlist has another quirk, which is that whenever you want to add a series, it then adds every episode of the program ever made. So if you like watching something a little light-hearted, like uh, Air Crash Investigation, 
then you've got to go through 22 series to get to the one you want. Oh my God, where is it? Oh, here we go. I can see why Sky's done this, but there really ought to be a button for storing only new episodes. So all in all, the experience of streaming on demand isn't bad, it's just not quite as good as recording on Sky Q. And there are a couple of other problems with Sky Glass. The first might seem a bit trivial, but it's the fast forward button. It just doesn't always work the way it should do. You can sometimes press it and it looks like it's fast forwarding through the program and you let go and you realize you haven't gone anywhere. And if you want to fast forward your way through the ITV adverts, that's a skill that's going to take you a couple of months to master. And that leads me on to another problem, which is that Sky has said that you can fast forward through ads free of charge for the first year. Thereafter, guess what? It's another five pounds a month. And for me, that's the final nail in the coffin. So there we have it. Shall I keep it? Shall I hang this thing on the wall now? Or shall I send it back? Keep it, send it back. Send it back, keep it. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Gosh, it really is a very difficult decision. I mean, on the one hand, no satellite dish, less wiring, less clutter, a better remote, better sound on the second TV. And I'd say it's better for discovering new TV too. Although it is annoying that it suggests shows and films on so many channels you don't subscribe to. On the other hand, well, it just doesn't yet quite live up to the promise of letting me watch what I want when I want it. Certainly not as well as Sky Q. For some content, you're going to have to wait for hours and it may only be available for a few weeks, whereas on Sky Q, it's there immediately and forever. I think that outweighs the benefit of losing the satellite dish. So I'm sorry, Sky, I'm sending it back. But I tell you what, I think I'll probably ask for it back in a year or so. I do have a sense that streaming on demand is the way of the future. And once everything is available on demand immediately, or they add a hard drive to record stuff on, and they improve that playlist feature and get fast forwarding working a little better, then this will be an absolute winner. Better yet, if they could offer a version that just uses one of these little pucks, rather than tying you to a TV, I'd bite their arm off. Until then, if you know anyone who's got fibre broadband and is thinking about Sky Glass, you might like to share this. Otherwise, till the next time, I've been Arlo Guthrie. Bye-bye.